I had more in me than I was expressing, and I did not know it. Because of his encouragement, I did so many things I had absolutely no idea that I could do. I encourage you to live full and to die empty. There's more in you right now than just working on a job where they pay you just enough to keep you from quitting and you work just hard enough to keep from getting fired. And when you make the decision and identify that key area of your life that you need to make a radical change, things will begin to open up. Now here's the other thing that's very important. Once you identify your goal, I want you to get, if possible, a visual picture of your goal. My major goal was to buy my mother a home. I got the picture of the home with a 12-foot swimming pool and a basketball court on a golf course. I bought that home for my mother. It cost just over $400,000, 10,000 square feet. I had a picture long before I had the money and the down payment to get it. My goal was to be known nationally and internationally as a speaker. I had that goal. I had a card that I had on one side, asking and it shall be given, seeking and you shall find, knocking and it shall be opened. On the other side I had, I'm the world's number one orator. I produced that result in my life. I had a goal of becoming a talk show host. I used to watch Phil Donahue and I put my picture on the screen of the television as I listened to the program. I visualized myself there and I was called by King World Production and I had my own talk show. You will fail your way to success. Trust me on that. You can have a lot of failures, a lot of disappointments, but you will fail your way to success. Goethe says, that which does not kill you will make you stronger. See, 85% of people allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. That's why you have to be of good courage. You have to have courage. When life knocks you down, I have a saying, try and land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. So once you look at and decide the goal that you want, you want to put some things, put a treasure board or a, a gold board. But the next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you that some of you already know that it's hard. It's not easy. It's hard changing your life. It was hard when just over three years ago in the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan, where I was operating my business, and I fell on some hard times and I was sleeping in my office. It was hard coming into the lobby and the security said, excuse me, Mr. Brown, can we see you for a moment? And I said, yes. And I walked up to the counter and he gave me an envelope. And he said, would you mind reading it here? And I opened the envelope and the envelope was from management that said, this is an office tower. It's not a hotel, please. Do not sleep in your office. And I said, excuse me, sir. I said, I just work long hours in creating my business. I'm an entrepreneur. And right now, things are bad for me. But they're not going to be this way always. And I just asked for the opportunity to continue to operate like I'm doing. I'm not trying to make this my home. And it was hard coming through the lobby. And sometimes they would laugh. There's a guy talking about becoming successful. And look at it. He's bathing in the bathroom upstairs on the 21st floor. He sleeps on the floor. Him and two other dreamers up there. Look at him. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen, coming to speak to people. And I was facing financial difficulties in my own life. I was behind on my bills and my dreams. And I'm saying to them, you can live your dream. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen. It was very difficult to pick myself up each day believing that I could do it. There were times that I doubted myself. I said, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm just trying to take care of my children and my mother. I'm not trying to steal or rob from anybody. Why did this have to happen to me? For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. No one could have convinced me by holding on by continuing to push forward, by continuing to run toward my dream. It's a long shot, ladies and gentlemen, from Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor, never knowing my mother or father. It's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded, but I kept running toward my dream. Don't stop running toward your dream. We block ourselves and we use these words almost like we're in a trance. 
like we're sleepwalking through life, that we find ways to cancel out our dreams that I think but is a dream killer. That a lot of things that we want to do, a lot of places we would like to go, a lot of things we would like to experience, and we just stop at but, and we build a case. In fact, I was reading something the other day that, that talked about but. It says, but is an argument for our limitations. And when we argue for our limitations, we get to keep them. See, but will cause you to procrastinate, but will cause you to hide out behind fear, but will cause you to come up with all type of excuses that you can validate your inaction and not acting on your dream. And right now, more than ever, people need to look for ways to live their dream. People need, need to look for ways to make it on their own. There is no such thing as job security. There's no such thing as a storm-proof or tragic-proof life. There are no guarantees today, ladies and gentlemen. The illusion is gone. There was a time when, when we graduated from high school, you were told, go to college and get out, and you go and work for a corporation for 30 or 40 years, they'll give you a go watch and you'll retire. So instead of people living in fear, feeling stressed out, feeling powerless, feeling like victims, I think it should be a time that we need to begin to look at ways that we can become an active force in our own lives. Look at ways when we can decide to take charge of our own destiny. Look at ways when we can decide to design a life of substance and begin to truly live our dreams. And it's time for people to decide, I'm ready to get on with my life. Shake somebody's hand on your right and left. A guy named Bob May say this, say, don't let nobody turn you around. Always something there to build a case on why you can't move on, why you can't grow to the next level, why you can't begin to manifest your greatness, why you can't begin to live life on your terms. Always something there to block you, to keep you where you are and keep you from beginning to develop your true greatness. Always some fear. And I'm saying that if you've been hiding out behind but, if you've been using the fact that you don't have enough money or you don't have the education, take it head on, go get the education. You should learn how to read to begin to expand your world. Why are you using that as a racket? Why don't you decide now that you're gonna expand your world, that if other people can learn, you could learn too. Well, it's hard for me, how do you, have you been and sit in a class yet? Have you signed up yet? No. See, a lot of people say no, ladies and gentlemen, to things, and they don't even know what they're saying no to. They haven't even challenged themselves. He hasn't even gone to sit into a class and say, teach me how to read. Instead, it's been easier for him to go through life, he thinks, trying to play a whole con game, pretending he knows how to do something that he doesn't know how to do. And you know what? Most of us go through life like that. Most of us go through life pretending pretending that we're satisfied where we are, pretending that everything is okay, pretending that, that we don't have any special goals or ambitions or desires, when really deep down inside we do really want more. So if you want to do something, if you've thought about something you want to do, take it head on. Decide that you're going to start looking at it, start doing research on it, start tackling it, Start becoming involved in whatever and wherever it might lead you to begin to explore the possibilities in that particular thing that you're seeking so that you can begin to learn all you can about it. Decide that you're going to face it, that whatever shortcomings you have, that you're going to strengthen yourself there. Whatever training that's required, that you're going to go get that training, that you're going to get started right now. The George Washington Carver would say, do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. S.B. Fuller used to say, and I heard Joe Dudley talk about, always strive to be more than that which you are. Yeah, don't get satisfied with yourself. Always know that wherever you are, you can enjoy more, that you deserve more. But most people, you know what they do? Most people go through life quietly and safely, tiptoeing to an early grade. Find out what it is you want, and go after it as if your life depends on it. Why? Because it does. You've got to live what's in you. Life is just too short and unpredictable. But what, are, what do we say? But, but there always be tomorrow. Oh, no. There are no guarantees you're going to show up tomorrow. There are a lot of people who were here yesterday that they're not here today. There are a lot of opportunities that were around yesterday. They're not here today. Oh, you can wait, but you know what Abraham Lincoln said? Well, good things might come to those who, to, who wait, but only the things that have been left over by those who hustle. 
When you step into your fears and continue to push yourself to go on, something happens for you. When you, when you have something you want to do, if you don't develop the courage to do that which has been given you to do, and you spend a lot of time going around trying to convince other people or trying to get their approval, what will happen is that you will lose your nerve. And other people will convince you that what you're doing doesn't have any value and you'll give up on your dream. It's an interesting thing about life I've also found that if you don't have the courage to act, sometimes and particularly, if you have something special to do, life will move on you. That when you step into your fears, somebody said, it was Winston Churchill, he said that courage is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. Here was a guy that was controlling my life. I was going through all kinds of changes because this man controlled my paycheck. And it was Carlisle who said, truth crushed to earth shall rise again. Winston Churchill said, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it, ignorance may deride it, but at the end, there it is. And we know scripture that says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And the truth that I had to come to grips with, that I wasn't in charge of my destiny. The truth was that I wasn't giving all that I had. The truth was that there are some things that I wanted to do, but I didn't have the courage to act on those things. And the truth was that Bert Charles was a blessing to me. He made life so miserable for me, I had to start looking at my life differently. Decide to do it now. Decide whatever you want to do, that you are now going to become actively involved right now, exploring the possibilities for you. That you're going to look at it and do just a little bit of it right now. When I decided to become a speaker, I didn't just quit my job and just ran out and say, I'm a motivational speaker. No. What I did was I decided to start looking at other people that were involved in the speaking profession. I volunteered to work with some speakers so that I could learn. Whatever you want to do, get your feet wet. You got to have energy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> You got to have life. If you're excited about what you're doing, even in the area of selling, you know people don't buy because of logical reasoning. People buy because of your way of feeling. They want to be excited about it. You want to have the kind of excitement that is so contagious that people want to be around you. Because whatever you're doing, whatever you talk to people about this particular idea that you have, they're looking at you and they want to know, do you believe it? And are you the kind of person they want to be in business with? And if you're not positive, if you're not energetic, if you're not fired up about it, how can you expect anybody else to be fired up about your idea? Am I right? Many of us choose an active living death. Many of us are walking dead. The walking dead. That we're not doing what we want to do. Many of us stay in relationships where we're dying together rather than growing and expanding and living together. We're miserable, but because we don't have the courage to see ourselves beyond that relationship that is turned toxic, we go through life living dead people. The price of living the truth, of being honest with yourself and say, wait a minute, it's got to be more than this. So you've got to decide, wait, wait. Even if I, I, things don't work out, even if I experience defeat or failure, that does not make me a failure. It's the difference between failing and being a failure. If, you, if things don't work out, if you don't produce the results you want, that's all. But don't confuse who you are with the results that you produce. If you want to become a risk taker, you want to raise the bar on yourself. Most people won't do that. We strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. The reason you're here is because there's something in you that says, I can do more. This just can't be it. There's something in you. There's a calling on your life. Make, make no your vitamin. Get excited about the no. Why? Because every time someone says no, that brings you another step to a yes. You're getting closer. Trust me, you will win if you don't quit. You will win if you don't quit. Even a broke clock is right twice a day. I remember I was playing a game with my nine-year-old son, John Leslie. 
And I beat him 10 straight games in a game called Connect Four. And finally, I said, John Leslie, I'm bored. I don't want to play you anymore. And I got up. John Leslie said, no, you can't go now, Dad. I said, why? He said, it's not over until I win. That was his attitude. We sat down and we played several other games. And finally, after the 11th game, John Leslie won. And he got up and he yawned. And he said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. And I'm saying to you, what if all of us took that attitude after we face a rejection and a no or we have a meeting and no one shows up or somebody say you can count on me and they don't come through what if we have that kind of attitude the cars repossessed nobody believes in you you've lost again and again and again the lights are cut off but you're still looking at your dream reviewing it every day and say to yourself it's not over until i win